R.D., how are you? What do you say, Bill? What do you say, buddy? Bill. Yeah. I had one of the most embarrassing and strangest things ever happened to me in my life this morning. Gee, what's that? What happened? Bill, you know, if I do say so myself, my little farm over here is pretty. Oh, it is. There ain't no two ways about it. It sure is. I had a man come over this morning from Progressive Farmer Magazine. Progressive Farmer? Yes, sir. All right. Taking some pictures and looking around and things. Mm -hmm. He was kind of an oddball sort to look at. And he looked me in my face and said, Can this big bay horse over here, can can it talk? I said, what? He said, can this horse talk? I said, man, don't be ridiculous. He walked up to that old big horse. He said, how you doing? Horse said, fine, thank you. <laughs> horse said, fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this man said, well, how's uh, R.D. taking care of you? Horse said, oh, pretty good, pretty good. So I got plenty of oats, plenty of cool water. Said, hardly ever plow much anymore. Says, pretty nice. Well, to say that I was taken back, It'd be mild, you know what I mean? Yeah, I imagine so, a talking horse. Then he looked at one of them old big dogs I had over there on the edge of the porch, one of them hog dogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> said, how about this young dog? Can he talk? Well, by now I'm starting to worry a little bit, see? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I said, I don't know, man. I don't believe he can. I ain't never heard him say nothing. <laughs> what old dog, dog said, how you doing? Dog said, fine, thank you. <laughs> he said, uh, how about R.D.? He taking care of you, all right? Taking care of you? He mis- mistreating you or nothing? He said, no. He said, I just lay up here under the porch in the shade. Me little dog feed about every evening, ride around the back of the truck, go hunting occasionally. <laughs> I said, man, I ain't never seen nothing like this in my life. <laughs> he come over and he pointed at one of them big old female sheep out in the edge of the field. He said, how about that sheep out y'all? Can she talk? By this time, I was a little worried. I said, I don't know. She might get her to say something, but watch her. She'll lie. <laughs> <laughs> talk to you tomorrow, Bill. <laughs> hey, what R. Do you say, Bill? Hey, R. Bill? Yes? Just a little friendly reminder. Mm-hmm. Sun is out. Yeah. Myrtle Beach. Time for the pretty girls to get on the bathing suit. We got all the college girls that got us tuned in right now. I've yes, had a sir. Calls. And we know for a fact that they go through a lot of rough stuff, Bill. They have to put that hot wax on them and snatch all them hairs out of there. Yeah, oh. <laughs> and, and shave and put that in there. Now, don't beat around the bush. Just go ahead and talk about it. <laughs> well, they have to, it's awful. It's awful. They have to, you know. It's got to be painful. But wear those new style bathing suits. They got to do that, right? There, there ain't no way around it. Mm-hmm. There ain't no way around it. Because when, you, when you're on there doing that, see, then, you you know, it looks awful if you have them things hanging out and all. <laughs> so you you got to shave. you got to put that nail on there. you got to hot wax it. And any of that's awful. Mm-hmm. We well, have a new process, I understand. Absolutely. And they can call you 249-4000. Uh-huh. Uh, we're making appointments now starting in the next 15 minutes. Uh, we have a bungalow over here on the beach, Bill. It's beautiful. The waves are coming in. It's a lovely afternoon. little daytime TV on. The lights turned down low with some candle lights and cold champagne. And what we do is we get the chicks over there, see? Mm-hmm. Get them red back on the recliner chair. Yeah. And uh, I give them a nice cold glass of champagne. Uh-huh. And I just gnaw them things off of that. <laughs> Bill, I talk to you tomorrow. Okay, Michael, we have somebody on the line. You say you want to make an appointment with R.D.? Yeah. Okay, where are you guys from? From Clemson. We're Kai O's. You're Clemson guys? Kai O's. The Kai O's? Yeah. Oh, they said guys. Right. Go. No, we're not guys. <laughs> no, believe that's... me, we're not guys. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> okay, what you want to do, make an appointment with R.D.? You just heard about his uh, special uh, new process, huh? Uh-huh. We should do. It sure beats the heck out of hot wax and all that stuff, doesn't it, man? Yeah, it sure does. I tell you what, it's got to. It's about 12 of us. <laughs> can 12? he handle 12? No, Hardy, he can probably handle all 12 of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you for calling. Thank you, bye. Um, bye-bye. Tag Fu, the sissy samurai, is back <coughs> in his adventures across the Aqualand. See him seduced by Salizi, the sexy siren from the Sea of Sin. <coughs> See him paralyzed by Pony Tangy, the princess of pleasure. <laughs> See Fang Fu nauseated by Nuki, the naughty nymph from the Nile of Nukia. <laughs> his tongue is still faster than his fist. It's Fang Fu, the sissy samurai. Fang Fu and his adventures across the Aqualand. See it coming soon to a drive-in theater near you. Fang Fu, the sissy samurai, as you've never seen him before. <laughs> Go, 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 go. 
Mr. Leon Smoke. Leon, how are you, pal? Doing good, Bill. How, how's everything down at the uh, WMNB? D- doing real good. It's, well, uh, it's good to hear good. your voice again. Well, it's good to hear you. Well, you're sounding good over the radio. You know, I've been listening to it as much as I can. Well, good, thank you very much. But, uh, Bill, the reason I call, see, mm-hmm. I just opened up my new business down here. What on kind of business do you have now? 69th Street. Uh, I started a new business. In the, uh, well, I got the idea, Bill, from a boy from Jersey. Mm-hmm. And uh, the business is called Leon Lightning Booths. Leon's Lightning Booths? Right. Now, right. what is that exactly? Well, Bill, you know, a lightning booth will lighten up your skin tone color. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so, in, yeah, with the uh, Suntan Studios at... Uh, right. See, the brothers need right something there. to do with what we want to do, too, see? Oh, I see. Uh-huh. So we charge an eleven twenty six a month for a membership. uh uh-huh. Or you can go for my best deal, Bill, which was included all year long for only sixty two ninety five. Now, how does this work exactly? Well, Bill, you know, the boy from Jersey, he did all the mechanics behind it and everything. Uh-huh. It looked kind of like uh, light bulbs in a, in a, uh, a big old tub type thing. Yeah, that will lighten lay the back in it. That will lighten the skin, though? That will lighten your skin up. Seems like, okay, whatever you say. I don't know how it does it, Bill. Uh-huh. They fluorescent or something. Mm. But uh, he, he a, knows how it works. Do the folks but, get a guarantee with that, with that price? Uh, well, of course, Bill. Uh, we got some satisfied customers. My cousin Goose tried the booth, see? You, and, your uh, cousin Goose? Right. The reason they call him Goose, he got a long neck, Bill. Uh, Big about, old Adam's up on it. How about uh, Doretha? Well, Doretha ain't tried to get but she got an appointment. What's her full name, Doretha what? Doretha Gaynell. Mm-hmm. Is she pretty dark? Could she be use a little lightning? Or? Well, she could lighten up, Bill, to about a caramel brown color. <laughs> she uh, a, a little bit chocolate nut black right now. I see. But Goose was a dark, sweet chocolate color, Bill. <laughs> what is he now? He uh he, he looked kind of like Sidney Poitier color before, uh-huh. Uh-huh. but now he got out the booth and he he now a smooth, a light brown sugar color. I see. He looked about like Harry Belafonte, somebody How like many? that skin shade. Why oh, is that funny? Boy, I had the oddest thing happen this weekend. Well, what happened? Had a, some part of an emergency arise yesterday. Oh, yeah? Bill, I was breeding a couple of coon dogs. Uh-huh. And <laughs> I couldn't get them to stop. Good. I could not get them to stop. <laughs> so I, I called. I didn't know nothing else to do. Uh-huh. I called one of them vets over there in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. I called him, and he told me, he said, well, ours says ain't nothing to it. He said, go out there and pour some ice-cold water on them. Uh-huh. I said, well, you know, that don't sound too bad. I went out there and poured cold water on them. Yeah. Nothing. That didn't work, huh? Did not work a lick. Went back and called him back again. I said, Doc, no good. He said, try some hot water. <laughs> went back out. Poured the hot water. I'm talking about scalp hair come off. Hot water. Whew. No good. Went back in, called him. I said, Doc, ain't doing no good. They're still heavy at it. He said, well, i tell you what do, R. said, go out and put the phone down by them, and I'll call you right back. I said, well, will that make them quit? He said, made me quit the last three times you called over here. <laughs> Dude, 
Did I ever tell? I'm, I'm sure I did, but this story bears repeating. Okay. About the old gal that was a maid for the wealthy woman over here in Briarcliff. No. And, and she's she's constantly watching this old withered up rich hag over there in Briarcliff uh -huh. taking these milk baths uh -huh. for her complexion. So supposedly. Milk baths. Milk oh, baths. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the old gal that was maiden for her, she uh, she went to saving her money, saving her money, saving her money. After about six months, she had enough saved up. She figured she'd take her a milk bath like the, the high society folks. Uh -huh. So she called over here to the dairy, and she told the man, she said, uh, I want you to bring me some milk over here to the house. The man mm -hmm. said, well, uh, how much you want? Well, it was like a quart, half a gallon, or two gallons. She said, no, I'm going to take a milk bath like uh, us rich folks do. He said, a milk bath. She said, yeah, I'll put it in my tub. I want to take me a milk bath. Mm -hmm. He said, well, well, you figured I'd take... Uh, 20 gallons or 30. She said, well, you know, normally, whatever you deliver to the ladies over on Brockville. He said, well, there's different sized tubs. We figure 10 gallons, 20 gallons or whatever. She said, well, just whatever the normal rich folk order is. Uh -huh. He said, well, do you do you want it pasteurized? She said, no, I'll pass my behind will be far enough. I can <laughs> splash it in my eyes. <laughs> Now, from the Billy Smith School of Broadcasting, better known as the BSSOB, a simple 10-week course on how you can become a super jock. You know, women have a thing for radio personalities. <sighs> and the BSSOB, the Billy Smith School of Broadcasting, will open a whole new life for you. Sports cars, fast women, payola, what a life. Here's one of our recent star graduates. Hello. I graduated from the Billy Smith School of Broadcasting, and I am looking forward to my new life as a super jock. We'll teach you all you need to know about radio on how to become a super jock, including a special course in hip DJ lingo. Okay, all you cool cats and sexy mamas, we're going to lay down stacks of wax and some cool platter chatter. Order now your 10-week course on how you can become a super jock. And welcome to the world of showbiz from the Billy Smith School of Broadcasting. Harmon Daniel. Herman, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Right. Him and Bath got married this past weekend. Who? Bath Taylor from uh -oh. over around Loris. <laughs> 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 they went over to Conway to the courthouse to apply for them a, a marriage permit Saturday and got the thing and got the deed done. Uh, Herman and Bath. Harmon and Bath. Oh, they are now Mr. and Mrs. Harmon and Bath Daniels. That's great. Uh -huh. They was over there in the courthouse and they went to the place where you get your little ticket there to get married with, you know, your uh -huh. permit or whatever it is, kind of like vaccinating a dog or something, I reckon. <laughs> and they, they went in, and the man asked him, asked Harmon, said, now, what is your name? He said, that's Harmon. That's uh, H-E-R-M-A-N Daniels. Mm -hmm. He said, well, that's, uh, that's Herman Daniels. He said, no, no, Harmon. My mom and pa always call me Harmon, and my name's Harmon. Mm -hmm. He said, well, okay, what, what, whatever you say. He said, and your name, ma'am, what is your name? She said, my name is Bath Taylor. <laughs> he says, would you spell that for me? She says, B-E-T-H, Taylor. He said, well, that's Beth. She said, no, Ma and Pa always call me Bath, and it's Bath. <laughs> he said, well, you know, whatever whatever, whatever y'all say. He said, you know, and I don't mean to be a bit out of the way, uh, Bath. He said, but you are a pretty healthy girl. Mm -hmm. You know, Bath, about what you say, 6'1", 2", I reckon. She'll yeah. go 225, at dry. Least, at least, right? I mean, with a big cotton girl. frog on, she'll go 225. She's a big girl. And he said, uh, you know, Bath, he said, I wouldn't hurt your feelings for nothing in the world. He said, but you're a pretty good-sized girl. He said, you know, you could you could probably you could probably play with the Green Bay Packers. Huh. She said, no, nah, I, I don't play with nobody's Packer but Harmon. <laughs> <laughs> don't do you like it, Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. For the uh, free dinner and yacht weekend. Free it's, dinner at Chesapeake we've, House. We've already gotten the qualifiers. I'm sorry, sir. You're a little bit too late. Uh, who, who is this Who is this calling, please? This is Archibald. Archibald S. Holbrook. Mm -hmm. 
Brown. How do you spell that? It's Arch. You got your A-R-C-H. I ball. You got your I-B-A-L-L. That's hole. You got your S-H-O-L-E. Hole broke. You got your H-O-L-E-B-R-O-K on the end there. And that'll give you your arch. Your eyeball, your asshole, and then your hole broke on the end. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The answer is for the for the free dinner at the Chesapeake. The answer. Wait a minute. A tight seal is the answer. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't say anything about a free dinner at the Chesapeake House. You're listening to the right station, are you? This is Billy Smith Show. Right, the Billy Smith Show, but I did not mention a free dinner at the Chesapeake House. Uh, I'm sure I heard it somewhere. Wait a minute, though. Just out of curiosity, you said the, the answer is the answer is tight seal? Yes, for the question you ask, the answer is a tight seal. Uh, what's the, uh, what was the question, just out of curiosity? Uh, what are Tupperware manufacturers and walruses always looking for? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer then is the is that correct? <laughs> that's, that's probably the correct answer, sir, but I, I didn't ask that. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you walrus up on this? <laughs> and Bill? Billy Smith. Mr. Trapper, we're glad to have you with us, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and how are you? Oh, pretty good. I can't tell you how much we owe you for inventing that flush toilet. Well, you know, I get kind of put out when people call it a Johnny, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. Huh? It's a crapper, you know. <laughs> it's a crapper. Is uh, that a... I invented it, and it's a crapper, and there's nothing else to call it but a crapper. That's what you use it for, and you crap, and you put in a crapper, and it's a crapper. <laughs> That's the only thing you can call it. You call it a Johnny. It's not a Johnny. It's a crapper, because you're crapping it, and it's a crap. It's a crapper. It's a crapper. <laughs> and it ain't no... You can call it... You can call it... You know, you can call it a sofa if you want to, but it's a crapper. Already crapping it. And there ain't no way around it. And how'd you get the idea for the uh, for the flush toilet? Well, it was either that or dig a big hole. <laughs> and I ain't never been much for work, so I, you know, picked that way you could flush it up. You know, we didn't have no water running in the house. Oh, yeah. So what you had to do was you had to do part of your job and put it in the back to use for the flusher, see? So you put that in the back, and then you sit on the thing, and then you put the crapper in the crapper, and you crap the crapper, and you push the thing down, and it all works goes out. That's the way it works. See? The first one, that's the way the first one works. <laughs> what do you get? Were you just lying in bed, and you get the idea came to you? Or, uh... Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I was. I was lying in bed one night, and um, I got up, you know, to take care of some business. And then, of course, we didn't have any indoor crappers, you see. We had these little swap jar thing they call them. Slop jar. You ever use one of them? And I went in there and I went, I went in there and it was in the, of, in the middle of the winter, see? And you go in there and perch up on one of them things and And let me tell you, it'll make you, it'll, you talk about um, uh, being, the, you know, having to come up with something pretty quick. You get perched up on the ice cold rim of a <laughs> You'll go to thinking about something, let me tell you. <laughs> Mr. Crapper, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you for having well. me. <laughs> Look who's here, boys and girls. Mr. R.D. Nick. R.D., how are you, buddy? <laughs> what do you say, Bill? What do you say, R? Boy, I tell you, I don't know. You got a story for us today? Yes, I do have a story for us, Bill. <laughs> okay. Uh, our friend Mark Saunders was telling me, you know, Mark went to school over here in South Carolina. He was telling me things were kind of tough on his mom and dad's place. Didn't have a whole lot of money. They was trying to decide how they was going to get up the money to, to send Mark off to school mm -hmm. and uh, decided they'd have to sell something so to sell some sold some farm equipment and stuff first one thing and another and finally got up the money and old Mark went on off to school see? Mm -hmm. Mark had a dog that he loved he just loved the dog old uh, blue tick hound named Blue you Mark said blue? I'm gonna go to school cause I got to but I'm taking my dog with me old blue old blue uh -huh. got to take old blue with me uh -huh. and he got up to Bill first semester he's there he got this young girl up there in a family way Oh, my goodness. If you get my drift. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there's a doctor up there said, we can get, get this thing straightened out for you for $250. Mm -hmm. Mark said, good Lord, $250. I ain't got to it. Wrote home to Dad. Uh, there's a professor up here says he can teach Blue how to talk. Huh. Can teach him how to talk, but it's going to cost $250. Mm -hmm. Dad got busy. Him and his mom scraped the money up and sent, sent Mark the money. Everything mm -hmm. was fine. Mm -hmm. Next semester... Same thing. Oh, my. So, you know how he is. <laughs> Put the bow tie on, he's in for trouble then. You know what I mean? <laughs> he said, 
out looking around with the bow tie on, gets back in trouble, another $250 sent home, said, sent a little note home, said, the professor says he's got blue where he can mumble a few words and thinks he can improve his vocabulary by teaching him how to read. <laughs> but it's going to be another 250 <laughs> Poor Dan, Mom, they, they, <laughs> they scrape up another 250 and send it on back up there. By this time, it's about time for Mark to come home for the summer, see? Uh-huh. Him and Blue's coming home <laughs> from up in Columbia. And he's wondering how am I going to tell Daddy about Blue. You know, I get there and the dog can't talk, read, and write, or nothing. What am I going to tell Dad? Stopped at a little service station up there around Camden to get him some gas, go in and get him a pack of nabs and a Pepsi Cola. He's around behind the building. He didn't, didn't know what else to do, but he was breaking his heart. He was just one thing led to another, and he took Blue out behind the building and shot him. <laughs> Graveyard dead on the spot. <laughs> Got back in the car and went on home. Got home, and his, his daddy said had everybody there, all the kin people around the house, waiting to see Blue. Just couldn't wait to get, get Blue, you know. Told everybody about Blue, reading writing and talking and everything. Mm-hmm. He said, where's Blue, son? He's more excited about the dog than was Mark coming home. Mark said, well, Dad, a, a strange thing happened on the way home. He said, we was riding along then, got up there between Florence and Camden, and said, I looked over at Blue, and he was sitting there reading War and Peace. <laughs> said, he took his glasses off, he looked at me, he said, Mark, Dad's still running around with that Johnson woman? His daddy said, you shot him, didn't you, son? <laughs> <laughs>